So Craig and Jose, you both got uh, Oscar nominated for your work on Roma. Uh, it's one of 10 nominations that the movie received overall, uh, tied with the favorite for most nominations of any film. Uh, you guys have got, uh, the film, I mean, has got victories at BAFTA, Critics' Choice, Directors Guild, various other critics groups. Uh, so I guess my first question is, I mean, when you guys were working on this film, did you have a sense that you would be, you know, talking to somebody like me, you know, all this time later about Oscar nominations and, and potential Oscar wins? Uh, I'll let, uh, Jose, Jose was a production recorder, so I'll let him start because he was involved much earlier than I was. So go ahead. I was sure, well, I, you know, finished the movie saying that this was the best movie I've ever worked on. And um, my, my question was not about the Oscars, but about whether, I'll, you know, a lot of people would be able to see it. That was basically my concern. So at the end, when you know Netflix stepped in to um, you know finish off the movie, it was great because that way it, it ensured that uh, you know it would be be seen, which was you know something that I really wanted because it's a beautiful film. Yeah, and and uh, further to to Jose, so he's on sort of the beginning stages of it during shooting and stuff, and then Skip and I were obviously on the mixing, which is you know the post production. And uh, we all knew it was a very special film, and and uh, you know whether it was going to get accolades and and all the attention that it did was not it was sort of furthest from our mind. We we just knew that Alfonso had made a really special film, and we were all very happy to be part of it. Um, and then to see it go on to sort of do to do what it has, and to sort of see how many people really connect with it and and have embraced it, and then have all the sort of awards recognition and stuff. It, it's just uh, it's been a fantastic experience, and and uh, it, I'm sure Alfonso is just over the moon by by the reception that it's received. Well, okay, so Jose, uh, since you were there uh, on the set, uh, tell us just a little bit about what production was like. Because I mean, as I understand it, you know, Alfonso. There wasn't a uh, a script readily available to uh, certain members of the of the crew or, or the cast. Just, just tell us a little bit about that. Well, that was a tricky part for us because uh, you know there was no script given to anybody. Okay. I think except the production designer was the only one who read the script because obvious reasons. Uh, but for us, we got uh, a piece of paper with you know broad strokes of the dialogue and, you know, whatever might be said or not. Therefore, for us, it was more like, uh, you know, covering everybody, you know, from the get-go, everybody would be wired and, uh, you know, brace, brace for impact, basically. <laughs> because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the thing would evolve and change and, you know, but it was mostly very precise, you know, like the, the, the movie itself. You know, at the end was something that you know was thought out, and you know we got into the rhythm and it worked. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's um, you know watching the film uh, and, and watching all of his films. I mean, he's a filmmaker that's known for you know a very precise vision. So it's yeah. interesting this way of of working. Um, uh, can you just talk a little bit more about some of the challenges of you know because this movie is shot on locations for the most part. Um, you know, like uh, in Mexico City. Tell us a little bit uh, about some of the, the challenges for you as, as a sound recorder. Mostly, you know, uh, the city doesn't sound like it used to, you know, in the 70s. So that was a big challenge. Uh, the house was a big problem because we were right on the flight path of the, you know, arriving, the, the arrival path of all the jets that get to Mexico City. So it was very tricky to time the the, um, the rolling because we had to like stick it in the middle, basically. You know? <laughs> uh, that was one of the biggest problems we had. As far as you know, like the actors and stuff, we we always thought of uh, an Atmos sound ultimately to be in you know the way the movie was going to be finished. So in that sense, it was imperative that all the actors had a good separation between them. So that was the other tricky part. And as far as the logistics, you know, it's, I think, you know, not knowing what was going to happen. Sorry. You're fine. Sorry. <laughs> it happens from time to time. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> not, not knowing what was 
about to happen work in so many good ways, like for instance, the birding scene, the you know many natural reactions that uh, ac actors had, where you know because they were totally unprepared, but at the same time they had lived all this sequence, and they you know like the reactions were very natural and very precious. I think, yeah. Did it help that, um, I mean, he had a long time to shoot this film. I remember hearing him in interviews talk about how he didn't want to feel constrained by time. Mm -hmm. but did that help that there was so much time to just, to, you know, to shoot the film? Well, it was a film that I like no other because he was photographing it as well, as directing and producing and writing and, you know, all that. <laughs> So it, it was a very special rhythm. I've never done a movie like this, or nor have I ever recorded so much information in a movie, you know. The little Mexican movie that was going to be done with an available light turned out to be 108 days. You know, we were carrying a lot of lights because we shot on the Alexa 65 that, that the lenses are very slow. So you need a lot of light. And it was a very, very interesting process. I mean, it was, for me, I loved it because, you know, I know Alfonso since our 20s. Yeah. So, and I had not worked with him since Situ Mama Tambien. So for me, it was a beautiful experience on that end. Well, Craig, tell us a little bit about um, some of the challenges uh, and some of the imperatives that Alfonso, uh, you know, gave to you and Skip in terms of what your work was going to be. I, I think, um, you know, basically we, uh, our our main thing was to make the film feel as immersive and, and make you really feel like you were in Mexico in Mexico City in 1970 and and how we achieved that was with using uh, the latest technology in Dolby Atmos and um, you know Skip and Alfonso sort of had done that with gravity so it was already in Alfonso's brain I think when he was even writing the script for Roma of what he was going to do and, and um, you know, and, and how Jose kept all the dialogue separate because Alfonso knew he wanted to be able to pan dialogue around the theater. Um, so that was sort of our main challenge was to sort of um, make the film feel as real and as natural as possible to, uh, to all those different parts, um, you know, of the film. Uh, the idea was that you could close your eyes and you could feel like you were in the house and you knew exactly where the street was versus where the backyard was or when you're on the beach for instance and and uh you know or in the city um you know when they went to the cinema um so those were those were logistic challenges of of how to get the right sounds and and sergio diaz our, our supervisor along with skip they they collected tremendous amounts of, of audio and, and ideas and and different sounds um that would then um, that would then go to Adam, Adam and Alfonso into the edit, and they would work and listen to them as they were editing. So by the time we got to the mix, we had a wonderful palette of all these different ideas of sounds that we were going to use, and uh, and then it was just a challenge of of mixing everything together and um, making it feel as immersive and as natural as possible, but also still helping dramatically. Um, the fact is, there's no score in the film. Right. That's a big that's a big thing. And, and all the music is diegetic. It's all in radios, televisions and what have you. So in essence, the sounds and the sounds we were creating had to sort of become a score and had to support um, the story and the narrative at the same time as as well as being as immersive and, and as, as real as sort of possible. So that was sort of the the main day to day mixing with Alfonso was how do we make these scenes feel just to feel right and and that took a fair amount of time but when we got it right we we all knew that it felt the right way you know yeah i mean one of the things that um i really liked about this movie was how multi-layered the mm -hmm. soundscape was and how you know you really got this sense that you were in the city you know you'd hear certain things like birds or car yeah. horns and, and yeah. things like that just kind of off in the distance can you talk a bit about how that how you worked to to put those layers there yeah the layer i mean basically it's you know you start a lot of times when we're mixing films we start with the you know what we'd call a foundation which is called backgrounds and atmospheres and stuff and that lays that lays the the sounds the the your bed sounds for everything else to sort of build on top of it right so in roma especially around the house it was very important that the birds felt and sounded appropriate for the time and the space uh, the dogs were a really big thing. The not only Boras, the the family dog, but 
the neighbor's dogs and the neighbor's dogs on the left side of the house versus on the right side of the house and uh, how everything sounded in the morning versus how things sounded at night or in the middle of the day was it was a big thing so you know basically we have all these tracks individual you know individual ability to sort of get in and, and mix all these different tracks and it just starts with diff different layers you know as simple as room tones and winds and and city traffic wash that you'd hear in the distance and then the other layer would be another layer of birds and then there'd be maybe the specific birds the parakeets that were in the in the back the back car park park area um and then and then you have your foley and your, your footsteps and your human movements that you would put in um any other sort of specific heart effects in in the house for instance if there's a clock ticking or the refrigerator or the sink dripping the water dripping in the kitchen um those were all really small minute details in a, in a day-to-day -day life but in alfonso's world we really needed to make sure all those sort of things felt correct and then you have all the dialogue and you have all the all the the main dialogue obviously and then any any um you know group um obviously there's a lot of scenes that are a lot of you know the riot scene and um you know um is a, is a big combination of, of what jose shot on set but as well as an adr uh adr and loop group sessions um a big thing with with alfonso was we had no walla in the movie and, and walla referring to generic backgrounds and then mm -hmm. And uh, so, like, if you went to the cinema, for instance, you know, it, it, you know, a lot of times you you have crowd tracks that you've gone out and recorded, but they're nondescript, they're non-specific, right? None of that was allowed in in Roma. We we basically had to use everything was recorded specifically for for the film. Um, Alfonso and and Sergio they set up a a big loop group session, and they had somewhere upwards of three hundred actors come in and and do all these lines for. All these little, all these sort of people that weren't main characters, they were just maybe off on the left or the right side of the screen. Um, but Alfonso took the time to write specific lines, and we had we found actors to perform those lines. That's that's a that's a layer of detail that doesn't usually happen, you know. So, um, you know, when you're with a director like Alfonso, and and you can tell by the look at the movie how much detail there's going on visually, that is a really easy translation over to the sonic world and and to really make the movie feel that way it just it's a lot of layers and a lot of experimenting of of how those layers sort of fit together and um you know so it was a lot of mixing and and we'd get a version of a scene and then we'd sort of dismantle it and then sort of build it back up and and try different things so that was a that was a real creative and fun you know part part of our mix you know, it's funny. I spoke with uh, Skip uh, mm -hmm. a few months earlier. Um, oh, wow. I, I asked him, uh, you know, did you, uh, w when you uh, were first, you know, approached about this, did you realize that it was going to be as complicated a job as mm -hmm. Gravity? And he said, well, that's just sort of, you, you always figure it's going to be complicated with Alfonso, but it's also going to be very creative and, and fun and all that. <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, you know, look, these kind of films don't come along every day, you know, and and uh, and when you have a guy like Alfonso that really is going to roll his sleeves up and be with you every day, and he and he was, he was there, and we were working together, making these decisions together. I mean, that's kind of you know, that's kind of what you do it for, you know, and and all your experiences of all your other mixes and all your other things that you've done in your life sort of come to that table, and 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 you sort of bring bring that to you to it, and. And that was a great thing working with Skip and Alfonso and myself and Sergio and Adam. Our, our picture editor was there every day as well. So that you know, it was us as a team, you know, working towards you know Alfonso's vision of how he wanted it to to sound. To see this little personal movie, um, you know, with no movie stars, uh, foreign language, black and white, uh, getting the kind of recognition it's getting, not just from you know critics and awards groups, but also, you know, from people just watching the film, either in theaters or on Netflix, what does that mean for, for both of you? Very rewarding, I mean, but it's also a reward that he's this very much deserves because he really put a lot of gambling into the movie from the get-go, I mean, black and white, all the, the factors that you said. Plus shooting it himself, and you know, I mean, it, it, the rhythm of the movie that you know was—if it didn't work, the movie wouldn't gel. 
and there was no coverage whatsoever in, in all those scenes. I mean, there were long scenes that, you know, if they didn't glue it the next one, you know, it would be... Still quite, editing. <laughs> <laughs> we would be still cutting it out of the movie, you know, and yeah. it was uh, a huge risk that way as well for Marfonso. And I'm very, very happy for him to see how people have appreciated how how smoothly you get involved into the movie by the time you realize you are deep into it and it's deceit deceitfully uh, simple but it's so precise in every single thing involved mm -hmm. so it's wonderful to to have that recognition for him his work yeah well gentlemen thank you about some uh, oh no you wanted to say i'm sorry no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm all good. That, that's perfectly summed <laughs> everything up. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to cut you off. Um, gentlemen, thank you both so much. Congratulations. And uh, thank you. It's been a real pleasure. Great. Thank you, Zach.